This looks familiar. Seen it in the prologue, and now in the epilogue. Welcome to the story time, Zoe. Hello. Am I dead? I don't know. It doesn't matter here. This is where everything is. Here, you simply are. Alive or dead, you just are. Understand? No, but please go on. You're special, Zoe. I am? You are. You are a dreamer. Someone else told me that. Is that good? It is. And it isn't. There's nothing good or bad about it. Like the stars above and the stones below. It simply is. Oh. So, where are we again? In the story time. This is where the stories are told. The stories that create the sky and the ground and all that is in between. You see, Zoe, this universe and everything in it is like an endlessly thick book containing countless stories. That's amazing. Can you tell me one of those stories? I could, but not now. There's no time. We need to act before it's too late. You're here to tell me a story, Zoe. I am. You are. I see. What's happening? Why do we have to act? Because the undreaming is unchanged. I don't know what that means, but it doesn't sound good. So where do I begin? At the beginning, Zoe. Always a good place. At the beginning? It's going to be a long story. That's fine. Okay. My name is Zoe Castillo, and I think I might be dead, but I'm not sure. My father's name is Gabriel. And so the whole thing starts again, I guess. And finally, today's the day everyone's been waiting for. Isn't that right, Ryan? <laughs> That's right, Diane. It's been a closely guarded secret for months. But today, WatiCore finally unveils its hotly anticipated new product, Dreamtime. Fans have been lining up in front of stores for weeks in preparation for what some are calling the single greatest event in recorded history. Wow. If you didn't have to be here this morning, Ryan, I'm sure you'd be out there lining up with the rest of them. <laughs> you betcha, Diane. Watikor has yet to reveal what Dreamtime is all about, except that it's destined to change the face of entertainment forever. Wire rumors have it that Dreamtime will allow people to dream lucid dreams about anything they want. Isn't that something, Ryan? Modern technology. <laughs> oh, you gotta love it. You just gotta love it, Diane. <laughs> Does that mean it was all for nothing? And the Azadi Tower. What the hell is going on here? I'm not an expert, but that seems to fall into the bad things category. And that's the rather sudden end of Dreamfall, the longest journey. Don't turn off yet though, there is actually another small scene after the credits. So, was Dreamfall all that fans of the original wished for? Well, no, not really. Especially when it comes to gameplay, this game leaves a lot to be desired. I didn't care for the action and stealth elements, uh, as you were no doubt able to tell, though obviously your mileage may vary. I've never cared for those types of games, and I don't appreciate the inclusion of elements like that in the sequel to an adventure game. 
I especially don't appreciate that at some places in the game it seems these elements are just there to try and hide how easy the puzzles actually are. Like for instance the catacombs in the underground city, which is just a simple matching uh, puzzle which is really easy to figure out if it weren't for those guards you have to avoid. Most of the puzzles actually are fairly simple and the game has the annoying habit of giving very explicit hints or even just telling you the answer. I understand that they want people to get to the end, but the longest journey wasn't all that difficult to begin with, uh, a few obscure puzzles aside, and this game just goes way too far in the opposite direction. It's better to just think of this as a story with occasional interactive elements rather than an actual game. I think it works better that way. Unfortunately, that story does make up for most of these shortcomings. In some ways, I'd even say it was better than The Longest Journey. TLJ had too many side quests, basically, to the point that around the time you get to Elias, you start to wonder if the designers uh, even remember the, uh, what's the, uh, what the plot's supposed to be. Dreamfall is much more focused, and I particularly like the inclusion of so many elements of Aboriginal Australian mythology, which is a very rich and interesting mythology that is not often exploited in fiction. It also has some uh, very strong emotional content, and some interesting character arcs, particularly April and Zoe. Kean's arc wasn't that bad, but a bit too predictable, I think. Although it must be said, his inclusion did a lot to humanize the Azadi, who would otherwise just have been stereotypical bad guys. The characters themselves are also great, uh, like in The Longer's Journey. I personally love Zoe, uh, she's a great character. I'm sure some people would have preferred it if the game spent more time with April, but I think switching between the characters made it feel more like a book or a movie, which was nice. And the secondary characters, both old and new, were likewise great. As for the ending, I'm one of the apparently few people who don't mind it. I don't uh, mind open-ended stories, and as long as we'll get a sequel someday, it's fine. This is clearly meant to be the middle part of a trilogy, like The Empire Strikes Back for Star Wars. Thornquist himself says the Dreamfall is actually a self-contained story because it's the story of Faith, that is, the little girl, which is played out in its entirety here. And I must say, I agree with him. The game starts with Faith and it ends with Faith, and that it leaves all these other open threads uh, as hooks for a potential sequel isn't a bad thing in my opinion. Some of the later parts of the game do see a little bit rushed. Personally, I would have liked it if we could have learned a little bit more about Faith's nature and her connection to Zoe. Uh, and her connection to uh, Helena Chang as well. Although it took seven years after tail, uh, TLG before they released Dreamfall, I think it wouldn't have been bad if they'd spend a year or two more on it. That also would have given them time to polish up some of the small uh, issues I have with the game, like actually animating people going through doors, or making a few more character models to use for NPCs, or maybe even use motion capture to improve the somewhat wooden character movements. Despite those small complaints though, I do really like the graphics in this game. The designs of the locations are absolutely top-notch and just gorgeous, and the, the real-time 3D really works for it, giving it uh, a depth that the longest journey cannot uh, match. And the game also has an excellent soundtrack. TLG, uh, TLG's music was good, but Dreamfall is just a whole other level. It's really one of my favorite game soundtracks of all time. It also has some of the best sound design I've ever seen in a game, and it makes excellent use of surround sound as well, although unfortunately YouTube doesn't support that, so I couldn't use that in the videos. Well. That's it for Dreamfall and The Longest Journey, at least so far. As of this recording, Funcom has not yet started development of Dreamfall Chapters, the proposed sequel to Dreamfall, so I suspect it will be some years before that finally reaches us. For now, we must say goodbye to the worlds of Stark and Arcadia, except for the short scene after the credits, that is. And I'd like to thank you, the viewers, for making this longest of journeys with me. Thank you, and goodbye.
Filmed on location in Stark and Arcadia. Yeah, as if. No grubbers were harmed in the making of the g this game. I think the grubbers were the the small trolls in the underground city. So frankly, I wouldn't really have minded if they were harmed. The undreaming is unchained. Very ominous. Tibet, 1933. And it's Brian Westhouse. Before he crossed the divide, apparently. that. Hello, old friend. Chavez. What, what are you doing here? Time is a circle. Take my hand, Brian. The future awaits us. It's the return of Cortez. Because what this game really needed was yet another loose end. <laughs> 